Panama and so forth. And in the, I didn't even recognize I was being segregated in Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. I didn't even realize it. I thought that everything was, they, they say, hunky-dory down there. But, you know, because Hunk, of what he said. Hunky-dory. Hunky dory -E that, that was right. the expression. Right. That okay. means real good. <laughs> and they, I was a perfect fool and didn't know it. I, I you know, I, I used the term Negro then. Colored was a big thing, you know. And, and Africa so, was not on your lips. What are you talking about Africa? Uh, man, Africa is where Tarzan and Jane was, and, uh, you know, the Humphrey Bogart. I used to go to see uh, John Wayne and T Tom Mix and Ruddy Regan and all of them <laughs> shoot, shooting up the indigenous people. And I used to say, hey, there's a savage coming. So shoot them, Tom Mix. And then with the African, I'd say, oh, look at them savage. Tarzan is coming. And I was hoping for Tarzan. And Tarzan hollering, Ungawa. And one thing, I didn't know that Ungawa meant Dudu. Because I, when, every time Tarzan said Ungawa, and when I found out that Ungawa meant Dudu, I said, Ungawa Tarzan. <laughs> I used to have fun then. But you wouldn't believe that this person, because I, what I know wasn't taught to me in school. I look back and sometimes I say, how in the world did I come this far from where I was? It's, it's all the miracles. That's a miracle. Tell me about your upbringing, John. No, I had suspicion from the beginning. When I, couldn't find, when I couldn't find my people in the good book, and my great-grandmother had told me that this was the book of God, this was the word of God. But where were you raised? I was raised in, uh, born in Union Springs, Alabama, raised in Columbus, Georgia, uh, near Fort Benning, uh, you know, and I mm -hmm. made my living partly as a caddy. Mm -hmm. Used to caddy for a major who later became a general and later became president of the United States. Uh, Dwight D. Eisenhower. He was a lost cause then, too. Uh, be that as it may, be that as it may, but growing up in a predominantly Baptist environment and um, becoming very curious about the Bible, uh, I began to suspect very early. How early? At uh, 10 and 12 that I did not belong to any people who were inferior to anybody. Mm -hmm. So then about 1930... But in your schooling up to then, though, wasn't the reverse implied? The reverse was Im implied, but I can say with great conviction, I never completely accepted it. Or were you going to a black school and were you getting... I was going to a black school where the teachers would sneak in. Black history, they could sneak it into mathematics, they could sneak it into anything. But it was in the fifth grade that... Um, I ran into a great teacher, who, Evelina Taylor, who was a, a deity to me to this day uh, when she saw me cutting the food and trying to get accepted by playing the food, and she called me aside and closed the door and read the riot act and told me that I'll never let you be less than your best self. You are going to get it. Gentlemen, it's obvious that we can't uh, unveil the whole story of our history and um, experience in these two hours or three. But maybe you can just sort of say some things to our viewers, especially young people, who are in need of some academic shaping and direction. I suspect you would all agree. What would your prescriptions to them so, be? Gil, let me say, say it this way, and I, do, I don't support system. But I think that one of the things we have to learn, in order for me, or I, I hope I'm speaking for two, two, two gentlemen, and this is for parents, our parents, you can't fight the teacher and learn. There's a discipline in study, and we have to learn. The damage has been done to us and still being done, but we ourselves got to take this. With all the bad things that go into the classroom, and I went through it. You gotta be able to count, you gotta be able to write, you know what I mean? You gotta know science. You gotta be able to equate and evaluate. And you can't fight the teacher doing it. Parents can't come down to fight the teacher. Bad teacher, get them out of the neighborhood. We have to go through the principle of educating ourselves. And our parents gotta do it. I'm sure your parents did it, and other parents did it. There is a discipline we got to go back to. And I said that the basic thing we have to do is to stop letting the damage, what he's talking about, talking about, to continue by saying, I'm not going to the classroom because they're going to say this. 
you don't have, when you go to the classroom, you're going to have racism. Don't care which, where you go, you're going to find racism in the system. The system is racist. But you've got to get in there to count, you know what I mean, to learn to read and so forth. So that you've got to get that bad with the good. And lastly, don't care what degree you get in or no degree. <coughs> Most of us think that degrees make us something. Degree has made me anything. I was a proud man before any degree and continue to be. A degree only gives you some way to get in and get a better bread. But if you depend and, and think that that is it, and we've got to, and lastly, I figure, what has happened is, if you, Gil, had taken the attitude I made it, to hell with everybody else in Harlem or wherever, then we would not be able to express the things that we are expressing to the whole larger community. We, some, a lot of us got to stop moving away, far from the other one. When we move, remember that the other one is still there. Because I'm going to say something, and then here, and my, to, for others, is that if men like Garvey, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, uh, Paul Robeson, and, and others, had moved away from us, and you notice I use Malcolm X and, 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 um, and King. I said, Garvey and Du Bois. I said, Paul Robeson, you, you know what I'm doing? I'm matching people in the same society that may have differed. I mm -hmm. uh, see, this myth about celebrating King's birthday, but not Malcolm, by asking for a holiday for King, but not Malcolm, but asking for one for Du Bois, but not, not Garvey. Mm -hmm. Keep us separate. We have to know that we decide who fought for us and who are our heroes. The larger society can't tell us who they are. Let me say one thing in conclusion. I feel that we have to realize that when we relate, when we speak of blackness, blackness must stand for excellence as it did in early Africa. We are black, for example, among the Egyptians with the color of divinity. We must not assume, however, that merely because someone is white or European that they are monstrous because the Western European exploitation. We must not use this simply as a crutch. We have to see it in a certain perspective. It must not be considered as innate to the European because if it is innate, there can be no change. We have to believe in the capacity for change in the world. The black man is in a terrifying situation. Largely, this is due to the European exploitation into those centuries of history. But if we are to come out of that, we have to change our consciousness as well as the consciousness of those who have enchained us. So we have to change our evaluation of our own blackness as well as our evaluation of whiteness. Yes. What I say to my students is that we have to find that compass that we can use to locate ourselves on the map of human geography we must find that clock that tells us our special time of day. We must know what history is supposed to do for you. History has the function of your watch. It divides up time and tells you where you are and gives you a general idea how much time you have to get where you still have to go. History is a, a kind of a guide and a stimulant. And no matter what you're going to study, even engineering, you need a sense of definition of yourself and relationship to history and how your people related to the history of the world. So history is the bottom line. Yes, and we need to stop thinking of ourselves as a minority mm -hmm. because between the Caribbean islands and Brazil and mm -hmm. the United States and in Africa itself, we are the third if not the second largest ethnic group on the face of the earth. And we've got a piece of geography over there, maybe 13 million square miles that's Hours and when I say hours, I don't mean north, south, I mean all of it. That's right. Every blade of grass, every grain of sand, and that's the inheritance of our children and their children still to come. And we don't have to go to any Bible to make any claim because our claim is all prevailing, and the map of that continent is stamped on most of our faces. Uh, let's go to our uh, bibliography list, uh, full screen, and uh, for our viewers. At Kelty, and in the matter of color, matter of color, by A. Leon Higginbottom, Jr. Professor Clark re recommends you read How Europe Underdeveloped Africa, by Walter Rodney, Stolen Legacy, by George G. M. James. 
And Professor Van Sertema recommends you read his Journal of African Civilizations, Volumes 1.